When thinking about the most coveted GMT sports watches in the world, let's be real. The GMT Master completely dominates. But with wait lists longer than a typical Kardashian marriage and the insane asking prices for models available on the secondary market, many have been forced to look elsewhere. And today I have two examples that are great options that battle on a bit more of an attainable price tier with the Tudor Black Bay GMT and the Omega Planet Ocean GMT. Two watches when factoring the secondary market are at least in the same ballpark in terms of price and probably are in the same line in terms of somebody's considering one of these, they might consider the other. But at the core, they are certainly different. But how do they compare and which one is for who? In this video, they go head to head. All right guys, so before we begin, if you like these head to head style videos, kind of comparing one watch to another, I love doing them. So please give this video a thumbs up and also give suggestions down below. What other watches would you like to see go side by side in a comparison video in the future? Also a big thank you to Bob's Watches, a partner of the channel for providing these two watches in for review. Bob's fantastic, just bought a watch from them. I just bought a, actually a Polar 16570. So this is probably another example of a great GMT watch as an alternative to the GMT Masters. Uh, but I'll save that for another day, for another review as I get some more time with it. But anyways, they have a great sale going on for Father's Day. You can get up to $500 off. I'll link in the description down below. And by using that link, you can support the channel and also get a crazy discount on a watch. But to start us off here, let's look at both of these watches at a glance. So with the Tudor Black Bay GMT, we're coming in with a case size of 41 millimeters, case thickness of 15 millimeters, which will be a main talking point later. Lug to lug, we're looking at 50 millimeters, Lug width, 22 millimeters. Water resistance of 200 meters. Movement is an automatic Tudor MT5652 in-house caliber here. Crystal, we're looking at a sapphire crystal. In price here, we're looking at 3,595 here with this leather strap option. Next to the Omega Planet Ocean GMT, we're looking at the reference 232-3044-2201-001. So this is the steel on steel version. Case size, 43.5 millimeters. Important note, there is also a 39.5 millimeter available, and in hindsight, probably would have been the better comparison here. Case thickness, 17 millimeters. Lug width, 21 millimeters. Water resistance of 600 meters. Movement is an automatic coaxial 8605. Has a sapphire crystal. Retail price, we're looking at $7,800, but Bob's price, $4,995. So before we highlight and get really into the details of what are the differences between these watches, what they bring to the table, I think it's probably good to look at just the similarities here. The fact that these are both in-house GMT caliber movements inside of these watches that are local jumping hour GMTs. So not the same as setting an ETA GMT. To show an action, both of these watches with the crown pulled out can allow for the isolated movement of the hour hand to easily change the time. This is really useful, of course, in a scenario where maybe you're just landing in a plane, you need to bounce back a couple hours or forward a couple hours. You can do that without having to stop that second hand. It's a great feature on these watches. And then just for a brief backstory, the Tudor Black Bay GMT was first introduced back at Baselworld in 2018 and perhaps took the crown alongside another Tudor model, the Black Bay 58, as being the top watches of the event. And now it has quickly become one of the most coveted sports watches on the market, now with the Rolex on the dial. On the contrary, the Planet Ocean GMT is a line that was first released back in 2013, being an extension of the Planet Ocean line, one that was first introduced in 2005 as a way to time up with the release of Daniel Craig's first Bond film, Casino Royale, in 2006. Since the line has managed to deliver on some of the best sports watches in the range, with maybe a few more limited editions than we really needed, but still great watches. But starting with the Tudor here, let's not get it confused. Rolex's sister brands certainly foul the GMT Masters design language with this piece. However, unlike what you could probably say of Tudor for most of their designs in the 20th century, this design and many of their designs as of late, I think are tastefully done with just the right amount of Tudor flair. When looking at the dial through the sapphire crystal, we are greeted with a matte black dial that contrasts with the white lettering on the dial and white date window to uphold very nice contrast, a point which needs to be brought up later when looking at the Omega. The dial also features loom-filled hour markers with the triangular hour marker at the 12, rectangular markings at the six and nine, and circular markings at the remaining hours apart from that lack of a marker at the three o'clock with that date window. All four of the hands in the Tudor are loom-filled, the two most noteworthy being the large snowflake hour hand, which has become a hallmark for the Tudor Black Bay series. And following suit here, we have a red GMT hand that bears a similar tip snowflake style. When jumping to the bi-directional bezel of this watch, we have an aluminum bezel, which in comparison to the GMT Master, a watch that has a more shiny or glossy style finish is much different here as the matte finished dial works incredibly well with this aluminum bezel. 
And although I do see some similarities with the way it reacts to light compared to that of the Pelagos, I did find this watch was a bit more reflective and can lend to a bit more shadows on the dial, so I don't find it almost absorbs the light like the Pelagos. Not necessarily a bad thing, but just something to be aware of, and I don't think it's a direct same material that we're seeing here. Now for the Omega, we have quite a bit of a different style. With the watch fitting that traditional planet ocean design, featuring aero style hour and minute hands, orange accents on the second hand and the GMT hand, as well as orange accent with the writing of GMT at the 12 o'clock. The watch has sharp and distinctive line minute markings and loom filled hour markings and loom within the inner wall of the bezel. So this one's gonna light up quite well, but I will get on loom a little bit more later. The crystal here is a dome scratch resistant sapphire crystal with anti-reflective treatment on both sides. And the watch features a ceramic 24 hour bi-directional bezel, a feature that really allows this watch to pop. And like I mentioned, we do need to address one difficult aspect about this particular version. I stress this particular version as I'm not sure how much weight we can hold on it because it, I don't think it's something that spans the entire collection of all the different variants of this particular Planet Ocean GMT. But with the white gold indices on the dial and the lack of them being loom filled, depending on the light, I could see the legibility here being a bit spotty. I think I might not normally point this out, but it became a bit more apparent when putting it right next to the Tudor, which does again have some great contrast on the dial. Speaking to legibility, we probably should look at both of the loom of these watches. Side by side, they're both very solid. The Planet Ocean giving off more of say like a blue hue compared to that of the green tint with the Tudor. And just to give them both points in this respected area, I found the Tudor's second hand and GMT hand much easier to read in the dark than the Omega's. However, the Omega also has the bonus of a luminescent pearl within the ceramic bezel that was incredibly handy in the area of orientation of the dial. But overall, I think both are very solid in regards to loom. Okay, now let's discuss wearability, a subject matter that I see very frequently talked about in forums and uh, different conversations I see online about these watches. But first with the Omega, this watch naturally wears much larger as a result of the larger case. Something that needs to be taken with a grain of salt since there is a 39.5 millimeter option as well. However, despite not technically getting any real overhang on the wrist, with the addition of the helium escape valve, a treat for the 0.001% out there watching, I find it a bit overkill here, but if you are using it for saturation diving, great. And then also the thickness of this piece, we are getting a watch that is very bulky, and I would say perhaps wears even larger than what the case size might indicate. For reference again, I am six and a quarter inch wrist here, 15.9 centimeters for metric system friends. All of this makes me think in hindsight that again, I think it'd probably be better to grab the 39.5 millimeter to do the side by side in terms of this wearability. But regardless, this is one thick watch that could probably be a plus for a larger wrist. But again, I think the 39.5 millimeter option will be probably the best option for most people out there. And then since the Tudor here is on leather, I won't use the bracelet as a point of comparison, but on this Omega bracelet, we have a great one. Basically night and day compared to the underwhelming bracelet that I had on the Railmaster that I reviewed when I did a side-by-side -side against the Milgauss. Link in the description if you've not seen that video. The bracelet is very nicely done, has a nice satin finish across three lengths, but the biggest upgrade here in comparison to the Railmaster bracelet is the clasp. The clasp features a slider to make micro adjustments and a fold-out extension as well. Something designed for the diver in mind for the watch to go over a wetsuit. This is a great bracelet, one that helps fit the substantial feel of the watch, but unlike the rest of the watch, it does have not like the same bulkiness to it, but maintain a still really well-built construction. So when I hinted at wearability on forums and online, I was mostly alluding to the Tudor Black Bay GMT. As unlike the Omega, this is a watch that comes in one size. If you can't make this 41 millimeter case work, well, sorry, small wrist guys, you are out of luck. Now, all of my experience with this watch was with it wearing that leather uh, band again. Uh, it has a deployment buckle, so no bracelet here for context, but I have to say, I think a lot of the watch's thickness is a bit overblown based on my personal experience here with the watch. When putting this watch on the wrist again, I have a small wrist, again, six and a quarter inches, 15.9 centimeters. I was surprised about how well this looked in pictures. It feels larger on the wrist, but the case diameter wore fine in my opinion. As I found the watch, appears slimmer on the wrist than it does simply laying out maybe on a bedstand or a table. It's a trait that I can't say many watches have, but I will say for a lot of Rolex watches, especially like Oyster case style designs, they're literally made for this type of idea where they're going to kind of rest within the wrist a little bit more, kind of press down on your wrist. So it is going to wear a little bit slimmer than what the actual thickness of the case might indicate. In addition, if I had to assume, I would also contribute this surprise to its incredibly slim bezel which in turn does make it harder to rotate. It's actually kind of a pain to rotate compared to the Planet Ocean. But for the overall wearability, I think making this sacrifice here is worth it. 
Uh, but just to make this clear, I think it's a bit larger than what I would prefer. I think if they could manage to get this in a Black Bay 58 case, we would have a complete knockout here. But still, I don't think it's a deal breaker if you wanna make this watch happen for yourself. So overall, I do think these watches are rather comparable across the board. However, when it comes to the movement, despite both being in-house calibers with the GMT function, there's no question for me which is superior. The Planet Ocean features a cost certified Omega Coaxial 8605, a movement with a coaxial escapement, silicon balance spring on a free sprung balance, two barrels mounted in series, rhodium plated balance bridge, and nicely finished rotor and bridges. This movement features a 60 hour power reserve and also maintains great defense against magnetism, this one being anti-magnetic to 15,000 gauss. That said, this watch operates a bit at unique terms in terms of uh, vibrations per hour, coming in at 25,200 vibrations per hour. An aspect that you can actually tell when glancing at the watch and comparing it side by side to a four hertz watch, for example. The Tudor here features an in-house MT5652. This is a cost certified in-house automatic movement that was introduced with the release of this watch last year. The watch operates at 28,800 vibrations per hour and has a 70 hour power reserve. But one thing we do need to address here is that there were some rumblings last year about having some issues with these movements. It seems to be an issue of the past. Tudor seemed to have corrected a lot of these issues with it was actually the changing of the date window. Sometimes it would either get stuck or go ahead and uh, go forward two days. So something to consider. It seems to be from a lot of the research I was doing uh, not to be an issue anymore or it hasn't been showing up as frequently. I had no issues when I had the watch. Again, take that with a grain of salt if you might. I only had it for about a week or a little bit longer than that. So just something to be cognizant of. Just wanted to address it. it seems to be covered. Uh, so just something to consider here. But overall, I think all of this lends to the Omega with the specs having certainly one in terms of movement here. So who are these watches for? Because I think if you're looking at both of these watches as a direct comparison, it is a little bit tough because they are so different in terms of their design. But if I was a larger risk guy and admired the specs and the roots of being a tool watch with a lot of these classic GMT watches, something that I think Rolex has maybe pushed to the side uh, with a lot of their models now kind of maybe appealing more to luxury than being a tool watch, I think the Planet Ocean would be a great choice. Even if you go for that 39.5 millimeter option, that's it's still a larger watch. And for those that want something very similar to the Rolex GMT Master, want that Pepsi style bezel, they're sold on that and just an overall design style that certainly is not a complete ripoff and has its own kind of uh, little flair with the actual design, I think you have to go for the Black Bay GMT. And if you're talking about my preference, I really do like this Black Bay GMT for just my personal taste. I think it looks fantastic. It wears better than I think what I even originally suspected. Really well done. Love just the matte style finishing. But if they were able to get this in a 58 case, like I mentioned, uh, absolute knockout and really would have me considering maybe picking one of these up. So guys, the question for you now, what watch would you choose? If you like this video, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. We're really close to 100,000 subscribers. Maybe by the time I put this video out, we might have already hit it. So big thank you to you guys for making this all happen. It's so surreal to me. And again, thank you to Bob's Watches, part of the channel. Hit that link in the description if you wanna buy either of these watches or any other watch on their site. Using that link helps support us and getting an amazing watch. I'm loving the watch that I bought from Bob's here on my wrist today. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.